guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. Merry Christmas Eve, because I think that's the day that this is coming out. Oh, is it? Yeah, I think so. I hope you all have had a really good holiday season, and I hope you have a really good Christmas. At this point, right now, I have to go get one more gift. So it's the Thursday prior to Christmas right now. How come you're not prepared? I, I ordered it. I ordered it the very beginning of the month of December, and then it dawned on me just a few days ago, like, I should track that package. Where yeah. is it? Like, didn't I order that three weeks ago? So I tracked it. It happened to be back ordered until the middle of February. Oh, man. But thankfully, we had enough time to, like, I'm going to make a mad dash over to Boise. I think we've gotten so used to, like, Amazon and having, you know, one, two-day shipping uh -huh. that you just expect everything to come quickly. Yeah, I just, you know, figured we have so many packages coming all the time that I thought, well, maybe it got set in the barn somewhere yeah. or, you know, so I searched all over the house thinking that maybe just somebody had set it somewhere and uh, nope, hadn't arrived. So I'm thankful that I found out that, you know, the Early time enough. I did. <laughs> yeah. So I think, I don't know if we're going to all go over this evening and have dinner or if I'll grab Monica and go out somewhere if we'll make it fun and festive. Yeah. But anyway, um, it's been a really nice season. Yeah, it has. Yeah, like I feel I feel like Christmas happened ages ago, <laughs> kind of how it goes when you decorate a little bit early, but I feel like it's been such a relaxed, stress-free sure. holiday season. I am ready for spring. Yeah, I am too. And I'm I, like big time ready for spring. Yeah. I feel like this is the first year that I've been like... A lot of years in the past, I the things that you've just told me, you know, like I think that you've really enjoyed having like the whole winter season kind of off from because mm -hmm. you you do a lot of gardening uh -huh. in you know in the season and uh it can be it can be a lot like i don't think you would necessarily like to have it a full year of right. of like summer gardening but so we all kind of need that that winter but bit. i feel like it was a it's a little shorter yeah like if we could just have like two months of winter and then yeah. back to summer I think too, the thing that happened that was weird this year, usually by the end of fall, like I am ready. I want everything to die. I just want to die so we can take a break. Um, but this year our fall was so long and so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And we got such an extension of the season in terms of harvesting flowers and, and uh, food crops on all of that. And I really enjoyed that. Yeah. And I feel like I could have had that go on forever. Right. I was just loving, loving it. So I'm excited for it again this next we year. We had a good spring too. Yeah, it was a good spring. It was like a... Like a, just a really short summer season. We yeah. had a really long spring, really uh -huh. long fall. And I felt like this last, like those are the years where you're like, okay, is this why we live here? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe it's, it's like, not so bad here. Yeah. Cause if it was like that every year, you know, no wind, uh -huh. no, you know, crazy storms coming through, wrecking everything. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. All right, guys, we're just going to jump into the first video, which was decorating Aaron's sister's front door for Christmas. And that was just a fun project. Um, I had been talking with Alyssa, Aaron's sister, and uh, I'd already sent her home with a few garlands I had left over from a project. And uh, so she, I know she had hung one or two, she had two of the garlands already hanging over her door. Um, but she was talking about how, you know, she was maybe going to do some more decorating. And I told her, well, I have a bunch of leftover stuff. And um, it just kind of progressed. The conversation progressed. She's like, hey, if you want to come do my door, you knock yourself out. So I thought, Perfect. I'm there. Um, so it was really a fun one. I utilized pretty much everything I already had on hand. I had to go buy candles for the lanterns, but I already had the lanterns and I bought a new mat, which once I got there was unnecessary because she had a pretty mat, but I left it anyway because it said Merry Christmas on it. And uh, it was just a very fun project. So Larissa said, uh, Laura Lovett, may I ask giant nutcrackers, where are they from, please? So I Googled it this morning because I couldn't remember. They were sent to us uh, by one of you guys in... I was so surprised when the mm -hmm. massive boxes showed up. What in the world are these? A few years ago. It was, yeah, a couple of years ago. And um, so I Googled it and I found them on Wayfair. I, I don't think, I want to say it was like Grandin Road or it was like a name like that. It wasn't Balsam Hill, but it's like a two word mm. company that they originally came from. But I did see them on Wayfair. They were like $500 a piece on Wayfair. Oh, dang. Like I had, they're nice and they're heavy. They're, you know. So, which like, means when they got sent to us, they that was like 2020. Oh, 20, no, 21. Yeah, it's 23. I feel like it was like three or four years ago. No, we got those big ornament stacks a long time ago, huh? Okay, but I, I don't really know exactly the time frame. Cammy said, What do you use to clean the sap off? Uh, so, sap. 
like when I clean sap off my hands, I just use mayonnaise and I know you can use hand sanitizer, but I'm not sure that I've ever bought hand sanitizer in my life. So I never have that around. Um, peanut butter, I guess works really good, but I can't imagine peanut butter is easy to get off your hands once you've put it on. Mm -hmm. Um, mayonnaise is something we always have in our fridge. Easy. It's cheap. Uh, what else? What else takes sap off? Like skin. Nothing I know of. Yeah. It usually takes a couple applications of the mayonnaise, but it comes like it comes right off. DRS Zilka said, is that GA box on your shopping site? So I did put a bunch of my supplies I used that day in that wood crate mm -hmm. that had like the wood burned garden answer logo or something right. on the side. Didn't wasn't that from like Hoseling yeah, or Hoseling sent it. Gilmore? Oh. Was it Gilmore? I wanna say Hoselink. Could have been Gilmore though. I can't remember. It was one of those companies. They sent it out with stuff in it. So it's not on our site. I don't it, I can't even imagine what that would be like to ship. Yeah. So heavy. Right. <laughs> Unless you ship stuff inside of it. That's true. Then you could maybe make it worth it. Maybe. Uh Anne Bergquist said the finished project looked fabulous. Who else uh, would have a pair of four foot nutcrackers just in case? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got lots of stuff just in case. And that's the the whole struggle sometimes when you do these types of projects, you know, for work, really, you kind of need to have props and you need to save things. And it's uh, like realizing the stuff that is worth saving because mm -hmm. I've saved a lot of stuff before and I probably still have a lot of stuff that I just never get gravitate toward that I just need to get rid we of. We need like a second barn where we have a really good organizational system to store Things like that. Like everything labeled. What We need to have like... like a check-in, check-out system. Yeah, yeah, with pictures. But I yeah. can like go through online catalog. This is what you have. This yeah, is right. the aisle you'll find it in. That everything has perfect. a UPC code. You like scan yeah. it in and out. Oh, that would be so, that would be so nice. Kind of impossible, but so yeah. nice. What was the giant vine creeping over the fence and starting to take over your sister-in-law's new planting area? That was a blackberry. So easy just to go along and cut those vines, those long, long branches off. That house actually has a big patch of blackberries in the back. Yeah. I remember when we went and we She were, picked a bunch. Yeah. We were looking around the garden for the first time when she was moving in. We're like, that's just a big patch of blackberries yeah. right there. And so she did a bunch of preserves with them. Yeah. Dana said, please help me. I just received three Brunnera and I'm in zone five. The weather has been beautiful. Can I plant these if the ground isn't frozen? Yes, you can. I mean, that is the preferred method, but if you've had your Brunnera in a warm spot, you're gonna need to gradually acclimate them back outside. Um, so even though you can still plant right now and for perennials and things, it's best off to have them in the ground, no matter what. If you've had them somewhere warm and just toss them out, you know, it's still getting chilly at night. I mean. I'm guessing in a zone five, even if the weather's been beautiful, it's still cold. Mm -hmm. So just kind of gradually acclimate those plants back out if they've been somewhere warm and then pop them in the ground or pop in the ground and cover them for a little bit. Susie Q said, question, whatever happened with the new build property that had all the berms? <laughs> do you, by berms, do you mean giant piles of dirt? Like how many, 60 of them? Yeah. Or yeah, it was 60 loads. We got the bill last week <laughs> can you explain Aaron because I I well, honestly don't understand I think there was a there was a little bit of a disconnect I think in maybe how I was explaining what I was wanting also we need to move all that stuff that's in the corner but I think it'll be okay in the end because there's a little bit of a drop-off there's like a worse drop-off now than there was before <laughs> yeah but I think in the end when we move that stuff and we taper it all down I think it I think it'll be fine. I just wanted it to be like a gradual slope down to where all those branches are, uh -huh. but instead like it it's pretty like flat all the way up to the branches and then it kind of falls off. Yeah. That wasn't really what I was after. But um I think they can probably They just need to drag it. some of it. They just need to drag yeah. a bunch of it and they could probably fix it in like a few hours probably. with with the right yeah. machinery. Well the machine's still here. Yeah. Yeah. So and maybe they're not done. Right. Maybe they're waiting for us to move all that junk. Probably. Yeah. Kayla said, the porch looks beautiful and festive. Thank you. Question, I know you like Felcos, but what would you say are your garden tools slash supplies and what are your must-haves? So, yep, the Felco 2s, um, the uh, Felco snips with the long. Is it the uh, something 22? Yeah. Do I have them right here? Yeah, I do. 322s. These, you guys, are awesome. I love them. Um, they also have a pair that's like got shorter blades and they're a little bit curved. I like these because I can kind of like get in to things a little bit easier. And I, I, I tend to like a straight blade. It just makes more sense to my brain. Uh, the the kangaroo pop-up bag with the hard shell on the bottom for sure. Uh, that way you can drag around your debris if your bag gets too heavy. The Tommy Co kneeling pad. 
is a is a must. You know, we don't use it as much anymore, but I feel like Gorilla Carts yeah. are kind of a big... Um, once we got gators, we started using them a lot less. But if we didn't have a gator, if we didn't have as large of a property yeah. as we did... Gorilla carts are awesome. It's the seven cubic foot one, I think. Well, depending on the size of your garden. That one is like a very, it's just a, just a jump up from the smallest one, but it's not as big as the giant one. Mm -hmm. And it's got like the, the dump capability and you really just can carry a lot of stuff in that cart. If you have one to two acres, you need the biggest one. Yeah. I think. Yeah, probably. Yeah, they're all handy though. They're yeah. all handy. And I always, I do find myself using those quite a lot. Um, my Mesto sprayer, especially this time of year, is a huge one. I use that to mist seedlings. What other are my go-tos? Uh, you know what? Falco has a couple of pair of gloves. Um, so just their standard gloves. There's probably a number. I don't know the number. But I do use it, when I do use gloves, I use those. And I use their the ones with the white on them. They're yeah. not a rose pruning glove, but that's what I use them for. Yeah. They're like this indestructible glove that I can cut like my Colette climbing roses are the worst. They're so full of thorns and I wear those and I can just like bowl through, the bully, bully, bowl through, bowl through, roll through, roll through. I don't know why. <laughs> anyway, I can go through that job with like not even a thought. I'm yeah. just, it's like I'm cutting back a soft perennial. Um, so I do, I don't use those all the time, but I use those a lot. I use our DeWalt hedge trimmers quite a lot for perennial cutback and or hedging. I use that Half shovel. I like that one. Oh, yeah? The one that... With the... I don't ever use the telescoping capability oh, to make Fiskers it longer. One? The Fiskers one. It like ex extendable? Yeah. I don't use extendable feature, but I like the feel of the handle. Yeah. And then I use their little shrub rake. It's like this wide and it's black and it's flexible. And I use that one more than anything else for mm -hmm. rake wise. It kind of covers it. Yeah. You know, I don't feel like your, uh, your list has changed much. No. And I think we've got... We did a video like years ago. Mm -hmm. It's probably exactly all the, the same. same stuff. Oh, um, augers. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a huge one. Um, the Laura edition, <laughs> in particular, uh, honestly, it's a game changer. And once we were able to make those little changes to the power planter augers to make them more usable for what I needed them for, like they're the best. Yeah. I love them. Um, and then if you have to use a trowel, like a hand trowel, I use a heart shaped one like this. Falco like a, has like one. a spade. Yeah. And that, I like it because it um, holds a lot of, or it gets a lot of soil out of the hole instead of like a long skinny trowel. I don't like those quite as much. What else? The Falco curved knife. I use that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I could probably think of other little things, but those are the main ones. Christina said, can I ask for a nighttime picture so we can see it during the weekly Q and A? Maybe when we're there um, for the party, we can get a little. Oh yeah picture of it. Next video was a Q and A with my dad. <laughs> that was, that was really fun. It went really well. I thought you guys were awesome to send in like 2,500 questions. questions in the end. I mean, it was, I read through pretty much all of them. I grabbed the questions because I was trying to, a lot of the questions that asked were just like, um, worded differently, mm -hmm. but a lot of them, a lot of know, variations were, of the same questions. Yeah, yeah. And so I grabbed the ones that I thought were asked the very, the most, and we didn't even get through not even a fraction of those. <laughs> I just had them in a, a document on my computer and we just started at the top and started going down the list and got as much done as we could in about an hour. I think mm -hmm. that's about how it ended up. Um, but I think my dad did a great job for a guy who doesn't like to be in the forefront. I mean, you guys know, um, those of you who've been watching our videos, he kind of like shies back away from the camera. And I'm, I try to be respectful of people. And I know a lot of people don't want to, they don't want to be on camera. So I, I am mindful of that. Um, so I just naturally don't show the people in my life who don't want to be on camera. I get questions about that sometimes. I think what it is, is that, uh, your dad, like myself, whenever the camera's around, we don't know how to act sometimes. And so we'll say really stupid things or, you know what I mean? Like we kind of almost are like not ourselves mm. whenever the camera's around. And then later we're like, why did I do that? That was so dumb. I think you get used to it more though. It's kind of yeah. like the Over time. watching my mom from beginning to now yeah. when she very first was starting to be in videos, I had to tell her like, mom, you look worried. Like you look worried and frightened was. all the time. And people are going to think I'm forcing you to do this. <laughs> and like I'm not forcing anybody to do anything here. Uh, so she's got, she's over the years just gradually become more and more comfortable yeah. uh, being in front of the camera. And to now it's like no big deal at all. Yeah. And she's just herself in sure. front of the camera, yeah, yeah. you know? And so are you, uh, my dad in a, in a interview setting, he was totally himself. Uh, we only had to, I was surprised, uh, I mean, totally himself, 
on good behavior. Yeah, right. He was very good. Um, I've talked about my dad in the past and how he's a little bit more like, he doesn't really care what you think, right? <laughs> you know, and he will answer that way. And um, I only had to delete one section and yeah. it wasn't bad. It no. just kind of had it taken a negative. We, both of us had kind of taken a little bit of a negative road. And I thought nobody needs to hear this negativity. Nobody sure. cares. We were both kind of being negative. Um, and so I just cut that part out and yeah. that was it. Uh, but he was, he was good. great. Linda said, does he watch garden answer videos? I think he catches some here and there. He's just not a like computer guy to start. There's so many videos that I don't expect anybody to, you know, watch them all. In other words, if you do awesome. No. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I don't think he's even watched the whole interview. He caught he said that he caught the last third or so. My mom was yeah. watching it. And everybody down at the garden center has watched it. Yeah. And I asked him last night, I said, Have you watched it or did you read any of the comments? Because you guys were so nice and i told him if you need a lift any day go to that comment section and read it because it's amazing and he was like well i might have to check yeah, that i'll check out. it out <laughs> probably won't um anyway that's you know what though that's like him being true to himself yeah. because that's his mo yeah you know uh joanne said being a horsewoman i'm wondering why the horse is in your logo hay seed canadian hay is good um the horse in the logo thing it's been a little bit of a like through the years, we've always kept it because that's just what it was. And I mean, we do sell horse pasture mix um, and alfalfa hay, mm -hmm. you know, uh, alfalfa is the biggest seed. How long that has that have. horse and rider been in the logo? A long time. As well, as long as I can remember. Yeah. I don't know when it initially started. Was that like the John subset oh, yeah. days? Yeah. Early, early on. Hmm. Yeah. Because he got involved to early. Find out how long that's been... I should Part ask. Logo. Yeah. Uh, Nikki said, can we get a QA and a with both yourself and Aaron? Just everyday questions, not necessarily garden related. We kind of do that. I mean, it's just not a full video of, of personal questions, yeah. I guess. I mean, maybe one but day this winter. Are like that. Yeah, maybe. We, maybe we can throw it up on the highlights channel if yeah. it's not garden related because we can put that in the title. Oh, sure. Personal Q&A with Aaron and Laura, not garden related. Yeah. So, you, so you guys know what you're in, what you're in for when you click on the video. Uh, Jacqueline said, when you set this up, did you realize how important this Q&A would be for your family? Having this story from your dad on how he started at Andrews and expanded the business recorded for all of time is such a legacy for you and your siblings, your children, and your and for your kids' children years from now. You have amazing parents. I do. I can see how your mom and dad's personalities just blend so well. Thank you for sharing your extended family with us. Oh, that was no question, just a yeah. really sweet comment. Um, oh, I guess there was a question. Did you see, <laughs> realize how important this would be? Uh, you know, I have thought about that. That, you know how much I'll probably appreciate how what we're capturing yeah um, on camera so we can look back at it and have that memory and our kids can watch it and right yeah cat from Illinois said your dad was great look like a pro on camera only thing is and perhaps I missed it what is his name I think I said it in the beginning his name's Mike oh. I'm pretty sure I said it in the beginning yeah. Should I? Well, yeah. which take I did try I, did a I took a, a, I had a, like three runs at it yeah. <laughs> to get it going um, let me see real quick I, I'm kind of curious Hey guys, how's it going? We've got a special one for you today. We have my dad, Mike, here to answer a bunch of questions. There we go. Right in the first six seconds. <laughs> Good, I'm glad. When you said that, I thought, oh boy, did that make it in? S. Stephen said, what a great idea to build soil with cover crops. Will Aaron plant a cover crop while you decide what to use the dirt field for? No, because um, we don't we don't have any like irrigation set up yeah. like a system to where we could actually grow a cover crop. So the only thing that we could put would be like a dry land pasture mix, mm -hmm. um, which I probably will do. Yeah. But, but yeah, we can't grow anything else. So the, the goal is probably eventually to have some type of irrigation out there. Yeah. But in the meantime, I'm not like in a huge rush. No, no hurry. Carolyn said it's alfalfa seed non-GMO. Great to hear non-GMO. Um, I think you, I mean, you can get like Roundup Ready alfalfas and things like that. My parents won't deal with any, anything like that. Anything that's been engineered to resist uh, herbicides, um, that sort of thing, they will not deal with. So all of the stuff that they uh, contract and they carry is... Um, 100% uh, non-GMO. Bethany said, what a fun video. I always saw you as your mother's daughter, but now I now see you as both. You were quite the combination. My question is how much fun was it having this conversation with your father and will he do it again? It was really, really nice. It went so smoothly. There was no like, 
he just rolled, you know, mm-hmm. he's just like a pro. He's good at talking though. He's always been like, he talks with the farmers that come in and people like seek him out. Like, yeah. They come in because they want to talk with him about things. Um, and so it went really well. And he's got the gift of gab. He does have the gift of gab. He'll think he'll fancy himself the type that doesn't, Yeah. but he, he certainly does. He can shoot the breeze with anybody. Yeah. Do you think I'm a combination of my parents or do you think? Yes. I, yeah. Really? You're totally a combination. Yeah. Because I would think most people would think I was more like my mom. Yeah. Well, what's interesting is I feel like your mom got split between two girls. Uh You know, like there's a lot of Monica that I see in your mom that you don't have. Mm -hmm. It's like you and Monica are just completely different. That's why we get along so well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's why you guys are like such good friends. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah. So like your mom, you just like, you just take your mom's personality and split it between two girls and that, and you got Mm -hmm. some and Monica got some, but I see some of your dad as well. Really? Yeah. I see some, a lot of my dad and Monica too. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 It's interesting. And I see a split in Joe too. My brother. You know, what's funny about your brothers. I don't really see any of your parents in Joe. Oh, serious. Yeah. I just, I feel like, um, I mean, looks wise, I can see, you know, yeah, there's similarities, but in terms of personality, I just don't, I don't see a lot of connection between your parents and really. And jo- yeah. I see it with you and Monica, but not Joe. How so? That is intriguing to me. <clears throat> I don't know. I f- Joe just feels like a. Um, I just don't see a lot of connections. Mm. I don't see a lot of connections in in personality type, between because I feel like your dad and Joe are friends. Yeah, they are. And and so like they go on, on father son trips every year for like five nights. They go to the coast and so like. I feel like they like a lot of the yeah. same things, but I don't feel like they come at life the same way. Uh-huh. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um. So, I don't know. Just a different approach. Yeah. Amy said Susan made a wise decision when he stopped him at the door. She did. He asked her for a date. She turned him down. I learned this during the video. I didn't know that little interaction. So, he asked her for a date. She said no. She was busy. And so, he left. And as he left, she stopped him and said, but she wasn't busy the next night. So, anyway. Uh, One more question for Dad. Does he have a single brother? (laughs) I don't think so. You know, he has four siblings. He's got an older sister my aunt Debbie, and then he's got, and then it was him. And then he's got twin brothers, which my grandma was a twin. She had twins. And so I was like, Oh (laughs) boy. (laughs) Um, and then he's got a little brother, but I think everybody's aligned (laughs) with somebody at the moment. (laughs) Everybody's Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, next video was unboxing houseplants. Uh, Mrs. Said I have an artist too. He's six and creates arts, art and messes simultaneously on a daily basis. It makes me wonder if my parents had to put up with the same for me. Uh, when we did this, Samantha was in the Hartley with yeah. us and, um, she, I had her set up with all of her things that she loves, Play-Doh, scissors, paper to cut, um, coloring stuff. She loves, I bought a whiteboard, uh, for Benjamin for school projects and, uh, she uses it a lot. Like she uses it more and she colors and anyway, on it all the time. So when a tag says low light, how low is that? Does artificial room light count or is some sun required? So far, all I've successfully grown are small cuttings that plaster themselves against my kitchen window when they get tall enough. Um, actual houseplants perish. I have overwintered caladium, so there's that. Um, you know, low light, I would still say needs a little bit of real light or grow light. Um, there's not a lot that you can stick like in the corner where it's not going to get any light at all. ZZ plants would probably be one of your best bets or a Sansevieria um, might do it. But there's not a whole lot that, like, just wants the dark. Kind yeah. Of. Uh, Anne Emini said, "Great selection of plants, Laura. Do you have to repot them? I have left mine in the pots they came in. Uh, you, I'm going to be repotting these. Most of them, I think. There was one I saw some roots at the very top of the soil surface, and I thought that one I need to get repotted here probably pretty quick. Most of them could probably stay in those containers for a while. House plants don't generally need a ton of space to grow." Um, but I'm planning tomorrow. I think I'm going to do just kind of like a repotting day and I'll film it, but I don't know. You guys might be bored. (laughs) I I asked Aaron the other day, is there a way that you could just film me just like doing my thing? Like just like puttering and potting. And he's like, no one will want to watch that. (laughs) Well, it's so boring. I think what people want is they want, uh, they want your thoughts on each of the plants that you have on like why you're going to repot this or not, or they want a little commentary. I don't think that people would want an entire video of just watching you Probably kind not. of do the same thing over and over and over again, like watching it once or twice 
might be yeah. fun, but but I think that I mean I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong. It I think people like to hear you give your thoughts on things. Maybe we can do a little bit of a combo. I don't know. I did forget to mention what this video was. So I, it was Unboxing House Plants. Proven, Proven Winter sent out a, a small part of their Leaf Joy collection. Um, and that's what the plants were. <laughs> anyway, a little backstory on I'm, that video. Um, I'm impressed at how filled out their collection is. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, when they first announced it. Because, you know, they announced that they were going to have a succulent collection uh -huh. years ago. Yeah. And we got kind of excited about that. Yeah. And then... It just all fell apart. Yeah. And it was kind of this like, uh, you know, something. I, I forget exactly. I can't remember the reason either. There was something to do with the stock, I think. Yeah. Or the, the it just crop. wasn't going to work. Yeah. And then, um, but yeah, then, and I wondered with the houseplants, like, oh, is this going to, you know, take off? Uh -huh. And especially knowing you, because you're just not in the houseplant game. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, they've really filled it out. I think they've probably been going for maybe like three years now yeah. with the houseplants. There's some I won't even touch. Calatheas, it's alocasias. Funny. We've been working with Proven but... Winners for like eight years and it took them like three years before well, they even sent you any there's no, There's no rush for stuff like that. Like I don't feel the need to, um, like, I don't know. It's just, I, I stay in my lane. Yeah. I'm pretty good, good at staying in my lane. Uh, and I do love houseplants in the winter, winter time. Um, but... And I like the way houseplants look for the most part inside a house. I don't like it when it's like the jungle vibe and there's like trailing plants everywhere. It's just, oh, it Do just you gives like, me uh, like yellowy shakes. orange houseplants that kind of look like they're dying? Is that what you gravitate toward? And that don't look filled out, kind of like just an errant branch here <laughs> and, an, and an errant leaf here. Dana said, oh my goodness, can you send me one of each? Hello, I'd like to order the Laura collection, please. I love Tradescantia, but I have the hardest time with the leaves getting brown on the edges. What's the trick? I keep mine fairly moist, although with those types of plants, and I need to do it with one of mine in the Hartley, not the one I unboxed. Obviously, that one looks really nice, but mine I reroot all the time, probably like three times a year. So I'll uh, cut all the nice ends off, and I'll pop them back down in the soil, and they form new roots and grow again until they get kind of spindly on the base with dried leaves, and I think, oh, that's looking pretty scruffy. I need to cut all the ends off and do the same thing thing again um so that's what i do kind of keep it moist keep it in a well well lit area and then just reroute them every once in a while probably shouldn't talk about rerouting when i'm <laughs> talking about a plant house plant collection but that's what we do with tradescantia there's no way around it it's how you keep it going red rose said that's a great collection where will you put them all i will find spots <laughs> <laughs> there are a few that i will give away because i already have some or i already have one somewhere and i don't need two so i will give those away and that will take a few right off the top i need to repot but i've got a lot of grow lights in this room i mean you can see the ones that are on right behind me but i've got several other grow light systems in here that are not running um, so i can arrange things in here which i love to have plant material in here I know it's like not a living space or whatever, but it's a fun workspace. And I love to come in here, especially this time of year. We could keep some in the You know, I wonder if greenhouse. we could retool this, um, the wall behind you and go up even higher. Might be really hard to, I, mean, I guess you could do like some of your trailing stuff. Yeah, you could have a, top. you could also have a little step stool in here just all the time. Yeah, you could. And One you could, could make it the entire wall yeah and have shelving units if we them. do that can we build them like nice with like a library ladder that would be fun <laughs> that you could slide well the, i think instead the whole, of a like, step stool the wooden i don't know with the moisture level in here and can you do that with wood yes you put like an epoxy over it huh. some kind of a some... well you'd have to anchor that to the wall well yeah and then I each don't know. bank I should has lights that. There's installed. There's probably something really cool that we could install on that wall behind you. Because we could still use those either somewhere else or we could sell them or, yeah. or whatever. But maybe we could like make something. It would be a fun DIY video. You and I and DIY do not belong in the same sentence. No, I, I don't know why that is. Why do you and I just like, we, we work together really well in a lot of ways. Yeah. DIY projects is not no, one of those No, we approach ways. those so different. Well, you know what it is. I, I guess thinking about it is that I want to plan and I want to figure out, I want to do it one time and you just want to wail in and you're more of like, you're like the bee on the bee movie. This time, this time, this time, this time. Keep hitting the window. You know what though? I will get mine done before you. Well, yeah, that's done. the thing is you, you oftentimes do. I'll usually have one moment of defeat 
where I'm like, this sucks. Why did I start this project? What was I thinking? Why am I doing this? I'm failing at this project. And then I rally and usually finish. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's how it goes. <laughs> yeah, I hate, I hate the planning and research part. Whenever we're talking about like even a project outside, um, you ask so many questions <laughs> and I like quit asking me questions. You know, I'm not going to know the answer and I'm not going to research it. I'm just going to do it. Yeah. Is that really annoying to you? Well, you know, we're probably annoying to each other because I'm asking questions like, do we have enough screws for that? That was a very diplomatic like, answer, Aaron. <laughs> you're like, why are you trashing my project? Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to know if we had the screws for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A little glimpse into our relationship. Uh, STFX Youth said, curious, do you neglect your indoor plants so much in the summer that you need to replace most of them each winter? No. <laughs> I only have to replace some, but not most. The weak ones. I have to replace those. The weak ones. Yeah, you can't be weak and live in my house. Um, CS said, looking forward to seeing these in retailers next year. Do you know when they start their 24 distribution to sellers? They They've should be in retailers at, right now. Yeah, we're way late to the game. Yeah, my parents actually have a much more a vast array of the Proven Winners Leaf Joy at the Garden Center at the moment. Like, they've got a lot of them down there. Uh, Franz Witte had a whole bunch of them. Oh, yeah, they're just, they're easy I to come by in our area. At, at Edwards. Edwards. Not in either. I saw that they were reusing a lot of white um, trays, though. Were they? Yeah. Yeah. Which is good. It's like if you can get more use out of them. Mm -hmm. I, Proven Winners doesn't... They don't care if you reuse those white trays, right? I don't. As long as it's not a branded pot. Because it doesn't probably. say proven winners on it. Right. I reuse the white trays. They just don't want a non proven winners plant in a, in a reused proven right. winners, which is probably one of the reasons that they're trying so hard to do those compostable pots mm. so that they break down. It's kind of like no matter what, this pot is going to go away in a couple of years. Mm. They don't have to worry about people reusing them. Uh, Julie said, I have a question that's bothered me for some time. What is the process for putting a new plant in the H2O bowl? Mine died. Can you use any plant and wash off the roots? Prune roots? I got a couple of the Grand Garden Show last year, and one of them didn't make it. Uh, any help is appreciated. I don't know a whole lot about the whole water in the roots thing. Roots how's in the your, water thing. How's your water garden doing? What water from garden? From a couple years ago. Which one? You put some plants in the... Sun porch. Sun porch. They lasted for quite a long time until I got so tired of cleaning out the oh. the bowls or the vessels. Sure. Because, I mean, I had them in too much sun, too. They get algae. So they got algae quicker yeah. than they would have if I had them in a shady spot. I totally think I could have maintained them had I adjusted things a little bit. But yeah. a lot of projects, especially if they're high maintenance, they get... We well, got it's like on. that with a lot of things. You have to find a system that works. Like we figured out for the outside, you know, like drip irrigation. Mm -hmm. If you get an automatic drip irrigation system, it takes so much of like the fuss away from mm -hmm. growing plants. Mm -hmm. um, then all you have to do is go out. Well, all you have to do is go out and groom, cut things back. Yeah. But at least you're not out there like hand watering yeah. something every day. Right. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know if they just take any old plant that's got soil around it and wash off all the roots and just put it in the water. And I don't know if there are specific ones that they do it with and if they've trialed others. I should ask them, like, how many have you trialed in the water bowls? You know, that's a really interesting thing for me because I've I've heard people like in the industry that say that like talk about certain soils and and say like, oh, there's you know, there's really nothing in that soil. Um, it's not real dirt or whatever, but like a lot of plants don't actually need dirt to grow and thrive. They just need the nutrients. Mm -hmm. So like any medium will do and water can actually be a medium that a lot of plants can use. As long as they're given nutrients. So that's the other thing. I mean, there wasn't any instructions on the tag. It, it, there was in instructions on what to do with the water. You know, if it gets dirty, you need to replace it and only keep it about an inch deep. But there was nothing about adding nutrients. And I'm thinking after a certain amount of time, you would need to add something and how yeah. much and you know, how often to the water? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, hydroponics is a big deal. There's yeah. a lot of, they grow a lot of plants yep. straight in water, but mm -hmm. without the correct nutrients, they will die. Or struggle. Yeah. Sharon said, have you ever thought of bringing your houseplants outside in the spring, summer, and fall? That's what I do. It helps me to remember to take care of them. That is a good thought. I could do that. And you know, a lot of times like with citrus or those types of things, they do get moved, you know, to and from. 
different locations. The only problem with moving things outside, I'd have to find a spot where they were shade in the afternoon for sure. And maybe even protected in the morning when it's mm -hmm. real hot during that real hot spell in the summer. Um, but I worry a little bit more about hard water spotting on the leaves. Yeah. Um, unless you've got somebody who's like super careful. I'm really careful when I water my plants in here or in the production greenhouse or in the inside to get water just on the the soil and not on the leaves because our water is just so hard. I wonder if we could have some kind of like a tray. Well, like the trays behind you, uh -huh. they're solid, but you need have it. like a, yeah, I know where you're going with that. Have an under, yeah. Underneath watering system where it like fills up with water, goes into a, a reservoir uh -huh. and then it pumps, you know, later it pumps yeah. that same water back through. Cause then yeah. it would be like zero water waste yeah. too. Yeah. That'd be cool probably fashion something like that that I mean I have tried you know filling these trays up with water and letting them I don't I don't water really anything from underneath except for my violets and only some of them get it from underneath uh, but these don't have drain hole or a drain plug mm -hmm. they're just completely solid so getting the water out of them is a huge pain you know what I'm gonna try it I'm gonna see if I can find on a small scale yeah I'm gonna see if I can find a tray like those but mm -hmm. larger maybe like mm -hmm. an eight by four or something and um you just need like, like in the a greenhouse yeah on the table, a tank yeah. underneath yeah like a 20 gallon 25 gallon tank or uh -huh. something underneath and then all you need is a pump on a timer on a timer for like two minutes and then um but you also need like an actu uh, actuator you need something to open and close the yeah. drainage hole right because you need it to stay closed for them to you know soak up the water yeah. and then let it drain that's a good idea so you'd need like two things on a timer the mm -hmm. So I, I'm sure it can be done. I'm sure it can. It so sounds technical, but it sounds like the if only, you could figure out the setup, that would be amazing. The only thing that would be technical at all would be the um, the drainage, like how you have it drain. Right. It needs to stay plugged for X number of time mm -hmm. and then right. drain. Yeah. Because I don't know, like 10 minutes maybe? Like the thing fills up, you leave it, Let it sit for, sit 10, for minutes. 10 minutes and then it drains. Yeah. Or 20 minutes. I don't know how long you could play with it. That would be really cool. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, next video was winter potted citrus care and harvesting lemons for a lemon pistachio bunt cake. Uh, so I just showed you my lemons, gave you an update on how they're doing. They're looking really good in the greenhouse. We did a top dress with line and sea compost. Um, and I just talked through my experience with, with uh, citrus. Everybody's experience is a little bit different too, depending on where you've got them, you know, what your climate is like outside, what zone you grow in. Um, all those sorts of things, so many different factors. So I just went through that um, sort of situation. Then we harvested some of the lemons and made a lemon pistachio bun cake, which um, I probably wouldn't make that recipe again, but it was a good flavor. Mm -hmm. It was a really good flavor. It just ended up being pretty heavy, but I was pretty open about how it turned out. In fact, I told you the night before, I was like, I think I'm gonna trash this whole video like, yeah. because I just, I don't think that the recipe, usually the recipes I share in videos are ones that I would make over and over and over again. And I thought well, by reading this recipe that I would really like it and has, there was rum in it. So I was expecting it to be a little bit more rum forward. Maybe I was expecting it to be more like a rum cake than, mm -hmm. and it's, it wasn't really a rum cake. It's a bunt cake. It was more, I don't know. Anyway, uh, super great flavor though. So I decided I'll go ahead and just be, <laughs> be open about how it turned out um, because the flavor is still really good and then I also made just a very simple centerpiece for our kitchen island with some cyclamen I had in the greenhouse Mark said every time I try to bring in citrus to overwinter it brings in spider mites is there something I can do to prevent this also I noticed how the Persephone garden just rolled off your tongue I'm trying really hard to call what was once the Versailles garden the Persephone garden yeah uh, that is the only thing that's ever kind of like stuck because Persephone still kind of sounds like fancy while not being Versailles fancy. Yeah. It's okay to call it a fancy name because it is the, I mean, the Persephone statue is out there. Yeah. So I think that's totally fine because it's descriptive. Yes. Versailles was not descriptive no. in any way. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Um, as far as spider mites go, I have struggled with those on citrus as well. Uh, and you know, I think the only thing that you can do before you bring them in is you could preventatively spray, not preventatively, you could spray them if they already have spider mites. If I knew my citrus had spider mites, I would not bring them inside. Um, not if you have other plants, I would, I don't know, try to sequester them off somewhere. I think the reason why, and I think this might've got cut from the video. I was gonna go back and try to search for it, but I explained mm. how the, the specific citrus that I have were the ones I had up in our front sun porch and then they got scale and spider mites so bad, so bad. I mean, it was thick. 
that we moved him into the barn where no other plants were around him. And then I went through and I wiped every single stem. Like I squished all the scale and got all of them cleaned off. And uh, we sprayed them down. I can't remember exactly what we sprayed them with. It might've been Captain Jack's. It might've been a blend of Captain Jack's and then some neem or something like that. Um, so we sprayed them all down and then I think they got a little bit more scale. We took care of that. And then I ended up just saying, you know what? We don't have the space. We've got to be able to park in here. And uh, we've got other things going on. I just, let's dump them. I'm done. I'm done with this. We tried. And Bethany was like, I'll take them home and see what I can do. Well, I think they got taken home. Then it got really cold, uh, cold enough to where like it maybe would have killed the plants, but instead they completely lost all of their leaves. And they just looked like a bunch of sticks for a really long time. And then lo and behold, they started to sprout new leaves. So Bethany was like, I didn't kill them. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> and I think that it was the cold that did it. Sure. I think that that took care of whatever else was going on because when she brought them back here, cause she was like, I, these are too big. I don't have enough space for these. Can I just bring them back? <laughs> oh yeah. If you want to take all my sick plants home and bring them back all healthy. Great. Um, so she brought them back to the greenhouse and that's where they've lived since she brought them back and they've not dealt with any spider mites nothing in Lucky. there i know uh but i think it was that cold that did it and we haven't been spraying with anything in fact this last year was almost like a no spray year except for bt budworms yeah yeah which is a very specific it doesn't kill anything but caterpillars if proven winners could figure out a budworm resistant petunia that'd be a genetically engineered petunia well possibly unless they know. could figure out like a really thick leaf or bud or whatever that the butterworms couldn't get through right. that sort Just of something that they don't want like to eat. more structural yeah or like something kind of spiky or mm -hmm. i don't know uh christine said where can i get that lemon juicer i got that at william sonoma um so they have one that's specific like the, i think mine's green and it's had lime in the title but they have an actual citrus one that's a tiny bit bigger if you want to do some bigger fruit as well and it would work for limes too uh, but the thing I love about it is that little cup that's attached and it's got little measurements. So when it calls for two tablespoons of lemon juice or whatever, you can just juice it out as much as you need and pour it into your bowl. It's so awesome. I love it. I use my own. How time. much do you love William Sonoma? Well, I like their store quite a lot. I feel like they should sponsor us. <laughs> yes, that would be <laughs> awesome. Me and all of my awesome cooking skills. <laughs> I use all the right tools all the time. I get called out whenever I cut anything on a cutting board for using my paring knife. Like yeah. I use my paring knife for everything. I don't even know if that's what it's called, but I think it's called a paring knife. I saw a thing related to cutting. Yeah. Uh, about how you shouldn't use plastic cutting boards because of microplastics in your food. Oh, for God's sake. People. It does kind of make sense though. I know. Because you are probably cutting little bits of the plastic and it's probably ending up in your food. Whereas if you're using a uh, wooden cutting board if little you know shavings of wood end up uh -huh. in your food it, you're gonna be fine yeah like i have both what is that a little extra fiber <laughs> yeah i do know i feel like there's just so many different things that people can hone in on and worry about and i just i don't want to live that kind of life yeah you know i don't know where the the like boundary is between things that actually matter and people need to stand up and be like yeah. you know this needs to change or this is harmful and you know yeah. Um, because like sometimes those people can be really annoying, but also if they're right, then it's probably important yeah. to, you know, to not eat certain things or, you know, I don't know. You know what, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But for now, I'm not going to worry about a plastic cutting board. <laughs> they're easy to wash. <laughs> Naturally, Sally said, is this the same lemon tree that had the scale? Yep. <laughs> yes, it is. Can you believe that? Um, Loretta said, just wondering what kind of lemon tree is this and where did you get it? I cannot remember. I've had them for so long. Maybe if I watched that video back, I probably said what the name was in that video. So maybe I'll do the legwork and I'll look and then we can put it on the screen. AKA it won't happen. <laughs> so much sass. Uh, Jane Jones said, thank you for the update on how to care for citrus. I live in Little Rock, Arkansas and have two potted citrus trees. One is a lemon and one an orange. This is my third year and each year I've harvested at least 20 to 25 lemons. Awesome. My question is, do you ever prune the citrus trees? My fruit is so heavy that the small branches are really weighed down. I'm getting ready to harvest my lemons and make a batch of limoncello. Just curious about how or if to prune once I pick the fruit. Thanks so much for your videos. So pruning citrus trees, and I haven't done a tremendous amount of it because my collection is pretty small at the moment. And usually like with our containerized trees, I just prune to shape 
mostly. And it's not like pruning your other fruit trees, like my fruit trees out in my orchard. You have to be pretty precise about where you're cutting and uh, you know, making sure that the shape in the end is proper. I think for citrus trees, I mean, you still wanna go through and do your disease damage dead, anything like that. Any crossing branches, take care of that. You can prune out stuff in the center because oftentimes the canopy on the outside is not allowing enough light um, or air in there to create much good fruit. Uh, so it's really just, you know, kind of maintaining the outer part. And I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but citrus kind of just want to be a little bit more like cut back um, in a way. <laughs> You know, cutting, doing some heading cuts and making sure that the branches aren't getting like super, super long and that, you know, thus having to support a bunch of heavy fruit at the end. So if you're kind of cutting them back a little bit and maintaining a little bit more of that that shape, uh, it's going to create stronger, sturdier branches on the inside that can hold up more fruit load. Um, and I think you're typically wanting to do it now, and this is going to be different depending on if you're keeping them inside or if they're planted outside. But I think it's standard to kind of do that late winter, early spring um, after harvest. So there's my like little bit of knowledge on that. For mine, I don't uh, prune mine at any specific time. I just do, if there's an errant branch, I'll cut that back. I mean, you know, they're not growing like crazy like they might if they were in the ground, if they liked it here. Um, it might be a different issue. Raven steals the night said, I love the centerpiece in the sunroom. Is it just moss? Everything about this video is so beautiful. Uh, it's, it is moss. It's Irish moss. So it's living. It has a root system. I planted it up maybe last week or the week before I planted up a couple of holiday kind of looking centerpiece arrangements. Um, so that one's been really nice and it's done really well in there so far. Joyful Things said, where do you get burlap that doesn't smell bad or do you do something to it to neutralize the smell? I know you can get some fabric that looks like burlap just in bolts at a fabric store. Um, the burlap that I used in this one was a burlap sack. My parents get them down at the garden center in these big bundles and they're brand new fresh ones. They've never been used. Um, so they're clean and all of that. And they do have a very, very, very faint smell, but not like the burlap that you find that has been used like in concrete loads to um, kind of cushion all of the concrete pieces. That stuff is st like, it's st kind of stinky. Uh, and I don't typically use that in arrangements that I'm gonna have in the house. This one, you wouldn't even know there was burlap in there. Last video was growing greens, herbs, and small root crops inside during the winter. So we spent some time in the uh, greenhouse cleaning out the green stock vertical garden that I had planted up this last year with all kinds of different things. It was very satisfying, honestly. Uh, I thought I was gonna have to replace way more soil. Um, I thought, you know, some of those perennial crops that I have in there and herbs were going to be taking up a lot more root space, but I was very pleased to find that it wasn't very taxed, the soil, but I still added in garden tone to recharge it. And then we added in some land and seed compost, and then we put it all back together and planted some seeds and just talked through some of those things that you can be planting right now in the winter time. You don't need to have grow lights or, you know, greenhouse space. You can do it on a windowsill, which one of our planters ended up inside. So the spinach is in there, hopefully growing here pretty soon. Uh, Tina said, has anyone tried growing in a green stock over winter in a basement with grow lights? Of course, does it work? Is it just a big mess with the soil and watering? Um, I haven't, I would think you would want to put some kind of a watertight tray underneath it because it still will drain. Or if you had a, a drain, a lot of basements have, like have a, drains like a drain in the floor. Yeah. Um, yeah. Put it somewhere like that. They do have like a well, on that, the thing that we've got it on, it's got a tube. Mm -hmm. All the water goes, and then the tube, you can direct it to where you want it to go. Yeah. So if you did have a drain, you could put that tube right to the drain. And really... Or to another container, and you can reuse the water. Yeah, I don't... It's They've got it pretty dialed in, and they only have you fill that reservoir at the top to a certain level mm -hmm. because they have it figured out how much water that the thing's going to need to get all the way to the bottom. I don't think you're going to have a tremendous amount of drainage, honestly. You'll have some. You'll have some, but I feel like if you're watering like the right amount, you know, mm -hmm. in, in the right frequency, you shouldn't have a tremendous amount, sure. you know. Um, anyway, I think that would work. If you had grow lights, I mean, you'd have to either set up something where it can have 360 grow lights or you'd need to rotate it all the time. So, but I think it's totally possible. But if you're watering it once a day, you just give it a little quarter turn little every turn. day that you water it. Uh, Bahamian Lily said, love the fact that you're cleaning up, Laura, but do you bottle up dried herbs like the thyme, rosemary, or chives? Uh, you know, I cut back one of the, when I cut back that dot wells time that I showed you in one of the pockets, I gave that whole canopy to my sister-in-law, to Alyssa, and she took it home and dried it and then brought me back a little glass bottle full mm. of it. And I've already used like half of that bottle. It's been awesome. Um, the rosemary, I'll just bundle up and I dry it in bunches. Uh, the chives, the chives, I would have had to pick through 
because there's a lot of dead leaves there too. So I just, the, all of that went out. Um, yeah, we do some, some, not a lot. I usually have fresh herb plants somewhere. Um, so typically I can pick fresh for a lot of things. Heather said two questions about the vertical planter. One, did you fill the self-watering reservoir after initially watering in the seeds? No, I did not. It'll be just getting overhead water for a little while until the seeds are up. And two, would it be possible to drape the whole thing with some lightweight clear plastic to act as a humidity dome? dome. Yep, you absolutely could do that. I think they um Do they, they have, have something? That. They have a cover? Oh, yeah. But you could drape anything. Yeah, you could. I feel like, you know, there's so many seeds that I direct seed outside that I never tent with anything or put a humidity dome on. And because it's staying so cool in there, I don't think it's going to dry out like it would in here. You know, things would dry out in here. So humidity domes, when you're getting going, are pretty important. Uh, AJ said, just in case you forgot, my Felcos are still sitting out waiting for your video and how to clean them. Is that still your plan? Yes, I need to do that. I really need to get after that soon. Uh, next question from user RK3LD, da, 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 da. could you soak your hose diffusers in vinegar to remove the hard water deposits? I could. There's one in there I could soak. The other one I've used so much that the plastic around the, like holding that diffuser, the metal part in is all worn Kicked out up. and so like water spewing out the sides oh, like no. that one needs to be replaced but the other one i could soak uh, michelle said laura are your lisianthus up starting mine this weekend yes they are well two trays out of the three i planted two trays of white and one tray of apricot no germination in the apricot tray they were all pelleted seeds it was a, an experiment um, because pelleted seeds do not keep their shelf life like they're pretty you need to use them pretty soon and these were all leftover pelleted seeds from last year and the year before in fact those apricot ones might have been two years old mm. and so it was kind of like well let's plant these and see what happens 100 percent. well i would say very close to 100 percent germination on both of my white trays uh, but the apricot one none so i've already dumped that one um they're up and about like the size of the end of my pinky some of them which is awesome not even to january yet so we might actually have like some decent plants going nice by the time spring rolls around uh ozark you said are the strawberries sweet this time of year are they like tomatoes and don't taste as good when the temperatures cool down either way eating fresh strawberries this time of year doesn't uh doesn't tempt me it doesn't tempt you to eat fresh strawberries this time of year is that what you meant to say? <laughs> because, oh my goodness, it is the best. So they're not as good as they are when they're outside, kind of warm from the sun, but they're still sweet and they're still fresh strawberries, still better than the ones from the store. Um, I do, I don't know with how nice it's been. I keep thinking maybe I should pop them out like somewhere, like maybe put them in the bay of a barn for a week and then put them outside so oh, they can get some dormancy. Sure. Because I do think that they'll be way more productive in the spring if they have a chance to rest. Um, rather than trying to, it wasn't an, my intention to keep them in there. It just kind of happened um, because the green stalks, while they're awesome planters, they are a little bit tricky to move around when they're full, you know, yeah. they're not like the Unless easiest they're thing. on a concrete surface. Right. Yeah. User said, I'm wanting to start a large strawberry bed next year. In your opinion, what is the best June bearing and oh, and what is the best ever bearing? Okay. So I've got some great June bearing ones. The honey eye, it's not spelled like that. It looks weird, but the honey eye strawberry all-star strawberries are really good um i've had really good luck with those both of those are great um the everbearing the seascape have been the best for me for sure i mean consistent production huge berries um and really sweet flavor for us i know it's different for everybody i had somebody comment and say that they grew seascapes and they were kind of sour and they oh. didn't like not sour tart um and they didn't like them as good as some of the other ones so i think it just kind of depends on it might have things. to do with your soil too. It could could be, yeah. Suzanne Morrison said, "Did the Misto Mester ever come to market? Would love to find one. Thanks for your gardening inspiration. We were just talking about that. I think we're going to try to get some in our shop. Yeah. Um. Anyway, we looked at. I think we looked at having them like branded. Yeah. But we'd have to buy like. Well, we'd have to buy. I think like five thousand of them, and um, they're not cheap, and you don't. They're hard like, to they're hard to ship. They're hard to ship, bigger. and there's not a huge markup. You know, it's like a lot of risk and not very much reward. Yeah. So it's like you you make all these, and then like, what if people don't buy them, and mm -hmm. then you're kind of stuck, and you you know spent like. So we'll get the unbranded Mesto, which is what I use. It's awesome. Um, we'll bring that one in hopefully here soon because I mean honestly, to find something that works as well as that one has for us. I've used a lot of misters and, and sprayers in my day, a lot. Mm -hmm. And that's been my favorite one thus far. So anyway, you guys, that is it for today's recap.
Again, I hope you all have the very best Christmas. Now this next week, we're going to be a little hit and miss because, you know, we're giving our employees some time off and we're going to take some time off. So I know we won't have a video on our main channel Christmas day and we won't the day after. So Monday and Tuesday, we're going to just be completely off and then we'll see for the rest of the week. Yeah. Just this take week? the whole week off. Oh, I just, I don't know. <laughs> Or maybe not. I don't know. I, I think we'll, we'll have something. It just may not be as consistent that for that one week. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great one. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.